I'm your host, Dean Mitchell Bell, and we have Ellie Weininger. 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 in the studio today. Sorry about that. I asked you before the show, how do you pronounce your name? And totally forgot. My short term memory is gone. Um, Ellie uh, joining us here on Acoustic Songs Live on WNJR. Thank you so very much for coming in. And uh, especially, you came from, you're from Woodstock, New York. I'm from Woodstock, New York. Awesome. The place that the festival did not happen. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of folks are. Yeah, confused about that. Um, it didn't happen. Were you anywhere around during that period of time that you were able to? I was actually in Binghamton, New York, and um, had dozens of people crashing on the commune floor on their way to and from Woodstock. So we had our own little Woodstock right there in the living room. Well, I um, I just watched. There was a uh, the the movie about Woodstock uh, about the. Um, or uh, I'm trying to think of the name of it, where the kid that actually rented out the parents. Uh, oh, that hotel. was a great movie. I can't remember the name, yeah. but that was really fun. That was, and it seemed very real to me. It I, did. I don't know if it was actually authentic or not. The, the well, some things I know were authentic because some of the characters they they got to play, um, the promoters look exactly like they do, but I don't know about the history. Yeah. So, Ellie, um, do you want to dig into something right off of the top and play it for us? Uh, sure. It's usually what I like to, to do as far as, uh, you know, kind of uh, shaking off the, the cobwebs, you know, shaking off the, the nerves and uh, just, I, I like to do that, get up on stage and just play something right away. What are you going to do for us? Um, I'm going to start off with a blues number, a traditional blues called Rock Me Baby, something okay. that I do around with for a while. Okay, this is Ellie Winninger on the WNJR Acoustic Songs Live. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> Get away. <laughs> shook, off so. the, shook off the cobwebs there, the, uh, mm -hmm. the long drive. Yeah. The coffee yeah. kicked in. I think you know? it did. Yeah, great. Um, so you came down from Woodstock today? Is that, mm -hmm. that, well, that, I, I spent the night somewhere along the way. Yeah. One of those major truck stops along the way. Oh, yeah. Chocolate number 141, your shower is available. <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> well, America, oh, boy. You got to love it. Got to yeah. love it. You know, I know. Mm. I, I've moved around so much, I should have just bought an RV. Um, it's, it's, or a VW van or something, you know. <laughs> they still make those? No. <laughs> I see them, though. Yeah, yeah. So tell me about, uh, I was looking over your bio, and uh, you studied guitar with David Bromberg. I did. I did. That was, you know, a while ago when I was in high school. Wow. Low these many years. So that, and... Uh, we started on the road to ruin. Yeah. As they say. The, 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 the bug bit. And the that bug was... bit. Well, I always had the bug, to tell you the truth. My mom was one of those moms who thinks that music lessons are part of, you know, our culture, very important. And uh, I was playing the violin, but I got tendinitis. Hmm. And um, they said, you have to stop playing the violin. And I was like, yes! Because I really didn't like it that much. Really? And I'd been playing guitar before that, and I went back to the guitar, my first love, and for some reason, that didn't seem to bother my tendonitis at all. So, yeah. there I was. I found my, my home. Wow. So, in, and you studied with him in New York? Did you grow up in New York City? Or? I did grow up in New York. I tried to grow up in New York City. I didn't quite succeed. I'm still trying to grow up, but <laughs> <laughs> if I'm lucky, I won't succeed ever. Yes, and if you uh, have any ideas, you could send them my way about that. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 there was a comedian that said, you know why, oh, I think it was Paula Poundstone that said, you know why we ask uh, kids what they want to be when they want, when they want to, you know. When they when grow they, up. Yeah, because we're trying to get ideas. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I think we're, all, we're known as the Peter Pan generation or something. Yeah. 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 So uh, you played around Greenwich Village um, I did. when you were in high school? Yeah, we had basket houses where they passed the basket around and throw a couple of bucks in there every now and then. CBGBs. Oh, now that's really crazy because a lot of people associate CBGB with punk, uh -huh. which was actually kind of a fluke because CBGB stands for Country Bluegrass and Blues funny thing about that so I was playing I played their opening night at the 13th Street no at the uh, Bowery Club where it, where it had moved from 13th Street I, I uh, didn't get a chance to play there um, I did a songwriter type of night thing New York songwriter thing yeah and it was a choice between CBGB's or the bitter end and I, I chose to do the bitter end just because of the the history I didn't know that other history part of what it well, really it was should be. Well, it was short-lived at CBGB because, you know, Punk came in on a, oh, all right, Hilly said, the owner said, okay, you can have a Tuesday night, thinking nothing would happen, and then the scene just exploded and took over all the nights, so Bitter End was certainly more of a folk club. Yeah, and it was, yeah. it was amazing to look around and see all the pic photographs and everybody that had played there. I felt this sense of history, like uh, yeah. almost, you know, touching the... Uh, magic stone or something, you know, right. but